Isn't God good? Look at this sun. Who would have thought that yesterday? Awesome. It is good to be together. It is good to be and look out and see all God's people gathered and more people continuing to gather. What a great sight. And the sun is shining. Little breeze going to keep things cool and little breeze going to dry some grass out. And that is a blessing. So thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and being a part of this worship service today. Today we are launching, maybe launching part two of the Bean Challenge. And Pastor Billy will be sharing words that will help us to see and experience what these next uh, 40 days or so will be like. This week we will be taking a look at some of the keystone habits that we will be discussing and reading and learning more about in the, the weeks ahead. And so we look forward to that. Some things related to the Being Challenge, uh, the readings themselves begin this Tuesday. So you have a couple days to uh, process that. If you get anxious and you read ahead, that will certainly be okay. There is um, a table over here. If you did not receive a Being book, or if you would like to have a second or a third book, either within your own home or to give to someone, you may pick up uh, those books. And um, Mary Bluebaum and Amy Cantoni are over there, and they would be more than glad to um, help you with that. Also, there is plenty of time still to sign up for a Bean Huddle. Majority of those huddles are taking place via Zoom. Uh, some are taking place um, in person, and there's one that is going to meet um, prior to this worship service each of the, the next few weeks. And so all those things are on the Trinity website under the Being Challenge and huddles and things like that, so you have the opportunity. there. I think there is a huddle every day of the week at different times, and so um, take a look at that. And if you've not uh, signed up yet for one, uh, please at least look at the options, and I, I know you will be blessed by being a part of one of those huddles. Also, um, related to worship um, and worship following our series where we will be outside here each of the next uh, few weeks, we, we would like to know what you think, what would work for you in regards to how we can begin to gather again in the sanctuary multiple times, uh, depending on what your desires are. And so there's been a survey that was sent out um, via uh, email, and I, I think maybe hard copies. I'm not quite sure about that. But the bottom line is, please return those surveys. You have the opportunity to uh, do those online. You have the opportunity, if you like, uh, to do them uh, on a hard copy, you can mail them back to the church office. And there is also a plastic box outside the door under the covered drop at the church where you could drop a hard copy in that box. We very much would love to know uh, your thoughts, what would fit your needs, and how we can gather together again more face-to-face -face and in person. There is also, um, obviously, with what goes on here with the outdoor worship services, a great need uh, for volunteers to help get things ready, um, to prepare things, but also to serve before, during, and after worship. If you have an interest in helping out any one Sunday or multiple Sundays, you can go to the Trinity website, uh, trinluth.org, and then slash worship, and you can look at many of those opportunities, uh, how you maybe can help out. You do not need uh, technical abilities or things like that, um, but just lots of hands will make uh, the job more fun and will make the job uh, easier for everyone. So take a look at that. Another note, uh, if, you're, if you're a student in junior high or high school, raise your hand. All right, so following the worship service today, the junior high, high school youth will meet for their in-person bean huddle, and they will meet around the back uh, concrete area by the playground, the basketball hoops, and things like that. So after worship, you can 
just make after you help maybe put some things away. You can help go back that way and um, meet with Mrs. Malinowski and other folks, okay? So mom and dad can come back and pick you up in an hour or so. So we look forward to worship and we look forward to lifting up our voices together, singing God's praises, and we will do that with our first hymn, actually hymns, Holy, 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 and Amazing Grace, and How Great Thou Art. I invite you to sing loudly for the neighborhood to hear God's people being together and singing God's praises. I invite you to stand if you're able. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
our responsive invocation are some selected verses from Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. Being confident of God's presence, God's mercy, and God's grace, we confess our sins together. O oh Lord, I confess that I have sinned in ways too many to count. I want to follow you, but I am often distracted by my own desires. My relationship with you has suffered, and I long to be closer to you. Forgive me, gracious Father, for relying on myself for my absence from your study of your word and my hesitance to share you with others. Create a clean heart in me and renew my spirit so that I may walk with you and work with you as I live in your grace. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We have two scripture readings today. Our first is from Paul's first letter to Timothy, the fourth chapter. I invite you to follow along on your personal Bibles. The version I am reading from is the New Living Translation. Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle. For our hope is in the living God, who is the savior of all people and particularly of all believers. This is the word of the Lord. For the gospel reading, unless you would be in pain or hit your head on something above you, I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
I invite you to be seated as we now sing our message hymn, How Great is Our God.
God, you are so great. And we thank you uh, for just dry enough soil under our feet to, to be able to sit out here in blue skies and sunshine with a little bit of scattered clouds to give us reprieve. And uh, we pray, God, today that as we gather in this sacred space, a, a space that you make sacred, the gathering of your people, that you would speak to us today, you would shape us as your people, and that you would send us out to share your forgiveness and love with those whom you entrust to our care. We pray that in the precious name of Jesus and all of God's people say, can I get a honk of a horn just to know that you guys are back there? Oh, that's a, that's a holy automotive amen right there. I love that. Yeah, I love that. By the way, if you guys start flashing your flashers, I'll know that you're saying amen in a less disruptive way, I guess. You know, we can do that. That's good stuff. I love, by the way, too, if y'all haven't had a chance to look backwards, we've got some people that are kind of putting their ingenuity into practice. If you have a truck, you're, you're the second row. Uh, so you can be elevated. Yeah, I love that. Look, we've got trucks back there. They're sitting back there, and uh, that way they can see over the front row of cars. It's beautiful. Um, I love that, that we're eager enough to, to gather as God's people to see each other in community, that we're getting a little creative and doing what we got to do uh, so that we can do that. And um, my heart is full every time I see this in front of me, just, just to speak from that. And uh, today, this is a big day. I've got a red shirt on. We don't normally wear T-shirts up here, right? But i got a red shirt on so that you know, we can see. We've got leaders out here. It says, Be Like Jesus. It's a part of the Being Challenge. If this is the first time you've heard of that, we tried to reach you. Uh, but I'm glad that you're here to hear about it. We've got a table over here uh, where you can get a Being Challenge book, as it's been mentioned, so that we could experience a 40-day journey together in a couple extra days. Um, that starts on Tuesday, but we, we have a 40-day journey together where we can dive more deeply into something that we heard last year, and we'll get to that, but I want to start. We're going to start in a pool, or at least next to a pool, in 2008, and uh, on the starting blocks in the Beijing Olympics in 2008. Michael Phelps uh, was supposed to be pursuing, and he did at the time, his 10th gold medal. He had nine gold medals uh, at the time. And uh, he, was, he was lining up in the starting block to get his 10th. And um, there's a lot that, that went into him getting into that spot. And uh, one of the big things that is obvious is it takes some natural physique to be able to, to swim or to be any kind of athlete like that. And so, of course, he had big hands, long arms, a long, strong torso, short legs, and feet that could practically turn backwards, uh, which is just, you know. Uh, but if you're going to be an Olympic swimmer, that's a good thing. And um, there was one problem that he had, though, and it's actually a problem that most of us have uh, whenever we're, we're going after big, huge goals and doing things that mean something to us. Michael Phelps used to get freakishly nervous. Like, he was super nervous every time that, that he would get up into to an important race. And so, like a good coach, uh, we had a coach that, that began to establish for him some routines that he would make habits so that those big moments would feel less different than the everyday moments of him getting into that pool. So I wrote down, we've got what were the, the habits that the coach put in place for Michael Phelps? Maybe some of you have been interested enough along the way to know this already, but the first one was breakfast. All right, so he would eat breakfast, eggs, oatmeal, and four high-protein shakes, always at the same time, Never deviating every time from, from the menu as well. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever had one high-protein shake, okay? But it, it's, it's said to, that at the, at the peak of his workout regiments, he would eat 12,000 calories a day. But it always started with the same breakfast every time. The second habit was that he would do the same warm-ups and stretches, the same distance from the race every time. The third thing, which you think this is a be a duh, he's going to put on his race suit. Now, that had to be on the list because it takes 20 minutes to put that super tight race suit on. So he had to put it in the routine and have it allotted out the right amount of time away from his race, right? Number four, he put on his probably noise, noise cancellation headphones, right? Probably like Beats by Dre or something. And, uh, and he listened to the same playlist that he'd listened to whenever he was working out so that it was the same music, the same vibe, the same excitement level being stirred in him every time right before his races. And then he would close his eyes 
breathe slowly and deeply, and imagine every single part of the race that he was about to do. Every single part. On the starting block, listening for the buzzer, diving into the water, every stroke, every breath at just the right time, swimming across the swimming pool. He'd imagine that with his eyes closed. Now, so that takes us back to then, 2008. He's on the starting blocks, and uh, he's standing up there, and as, as you were, have grown accustomed to seeing, uh, he got up there and did his routine back slap thing. I don't even know how his arms went all the way back around. He would hug himself twice around with his back slaps, and uh, that was a part of his routine, and then he'd, he'd bend down and be ready. Buzzer goes off. Now, I, I was a swimmer, and I know what this feels like. He dove in the water, and something went wrong. His goggles did not stay water sealed, so his goggles immediately started to leak. Now, you can't just stop and say, hold up, guys, my goggles came off, right? Like, you, you can't do that. So he's in the Olympics. He's trying to get the 10th gold medal, and so he's got to keep going. Now, what you don't know, if you're not trying to be in the Olympics as a swimmer, is there are other things that your coaches will do so that you can be prepared for that moment besides just imagining every stroke of the race with your eyes closed. His coach would have him swim in a pitch black dark pool so that he would be able to feel and sense how many strokes it takes, how to swim straight without seeing the lines, and doing it the same way every single time, every single effort. So because these were habits, they were ingrained in his mind, Michael Phelps just clicked into autopilot. Now, his autopilot is a little different than mine. My autopilot doesn't end with the crowd going crazy, with me not being able to see the black line and the T so you know you're about to run into the wall. His autopilot starts to say, count your strokes. It's going to take 20 to 21 strokes. Feel it. Don't trust your eyes today, but trust your habits. Trust your routine. It's going to be consistent because you've done this. He gets to 20 strokes, he, he senses he needs a hard 21. The crowd's going crazy, he doesn't even know why. Looks up, takes his goggles off. Not only did he get his 10th gold medal, he broke the world record in the 200 meter butterfly, right? I feel like I just wanna clap for him right now. I mean, that's crazy stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, we can glorify God, I guess, for something that Michael Phelps uh, was able to do. Uh, <laughs> is it already, man, that's a long time ago already. It's crazy. So the point is, is, is Michael Phelps and many other athletes, to be honest, and many other people that do great things, they have habits that they have intentionally put into their life that have helped them to depend on those things so that they could achieve some pretty powerful stuff. All right, and so, so we're going to dive into that a little bit as we, as we experience the 40-day challenge. You're going to hear the word habits come up a lot. So where did this start, though? How do we get to the being challenge? It seems to be a part of something bigger. We keep hearing the phrase red letter challenge. If you weren't here with us last year, we did the red letter challenge. It was a 40-day experience where we would look to see what it looks like to follow Jesus. Like, like what are the, the targets? What are the things that people aim for whenever they're a follower of Jesus? And in order to, to find out what those targets were, we paid close attention to the red letters and who spoke the red letters? Jesus. Come on, y'all say Jesus. Yeah, man, that, you guys, you had the chance. The Sunday school answer, right? Like, it was Jesus. We're going to pay close attention to Jesus. And so we did, and we learned five core things that every follower of Jesus aims for. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, going. Hey! You, got, you, you know you want to do it with me. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, going. That was a lackluster hey, y'all. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, that, come on, come on now. But that's okay. We'll, we'll warm up to it. So what we learned last year, which we want to reemphasize now, because it, it speaks to why we're focusing on what we're focusing on, is that all of our doing flows out of our being. Everything we do, all those other four things we're aiming for, flows out of the first thing we aim for, which is being being in a relationship with our Heavenly Father, being in a relationship with Jesus, okay? So ultimately, what we're going to do then for 
this being challenge is focusing on that one target. We're going to take aim at Jesus, okay? Now, it's important then to figure out how do we take aim at Jesus? Because if we're off a little bit, we're going to miss the mark, right? Now, can you raise your hand if you struggle with sin? Look at y'all been trained up, right? Yeah, everybody raised their hand. Everybody else missed the question. <laughs> So we're all sinners, right? So we know we're going to, in some degree, miss the mark, but we're, we're still trying to take aim and, and, and allow the grace of God to guide our lives forward, right? And so, so we're taking aim at being in a relationship with Jesus. And so if you were to fly, just to, to illustrate what it looks like to take aim and be accurate and right on target, if you were to fly from Los Angeles to New York City, obviously you'd take off and you'd set a trajectory. Any pilots out there? How many pilots we got? It's got to be one or two. Come on now. Missing the pilots. Oh, there's one hiding over here. He doesn't want to raise his hand too high. He's got to move the, you know, block the sun. So, so you know that if you, if you change your trajectory by just about three and a half degrees south coming from Los Angeles and you were, were headed to New York, by the time you get closer, you're going you're gonna to land in Washington, D.C., which lets you know that from the very start, if you're off just a little bit and you go a long way down the down the, the journey, it starts to show more and more and more and more how far off you really end up being. So from the very beginning, we say if we're going to focus on our being. We want to really be heading in the right direction. We want to set the trajectory well from the start. And ultimately, this is, this is not like saying anything profound, um, but, but that's what it looks like to, to be like Jesus. If we're going to be like Jesus, then we're going to follow Jesus. And, and when you ask the question, then how do you follow Jesus? Well, you follow Jesus. Like, Jesus is going somewhere. How do you follow Jesus? You go with him, right? I know that's a really profound, a really profound thought. Like, that's why you, you guys pay me the big bucks. So I could say, if you're going to follow Jesus, you just follow Jesus. Uh, but ultimately, if we, if we do that, if we look closely at Jesus, we begin to see a couple of powerful things. Number one, he invited us to do this. He invites us in on his life and to, and to start emulating his life. So that brings us a little bit to our, our gospel lesson today from Matthew chapter 11. Uh, and we're just focusing on verse 29. Verse 29, by the way, is the, is the theme, the driving theme for the whole being challenge. Verse 29 says this, and this is from the New Living Translation. It says, take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for what? Your souls. I mean, does anybody have a weary soul right now? My email box tells me that you do. And uh, my own heart shows me that I do. Um, we're being challenged to do a lot of things differently these days than we ever thought we would. And some of it is just plain hard. And we grow weary. And Jesus says, if we would go to him and learn from him, he's humble and gentle at heart. He's not going to be a, a mean teacher. Um, that we will find rest for our souls. Now, uh, Eugene Peterson uh, wrote a paraphrase of the Bible. It's called The Message. And uh, if you're trying to study the Greek and Hebrew, that's not the, the, the translation you want to go to. But if you're trying to get a new perspective on the nuances that are present in the translations that we study more deeply, there are some really good moments in that thing. And, and the way that he summarizes or paraphrases this theme verse of ours sounds like this. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Jesus speaking, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. That paraphrase uh, used the term rhythms, and I think what we're going to see is uh, a term that's maybe synonymous in the next 40 days called habits. So here's a, a definition of a habit. You can look it up probably get a few options. Here's the one we're going to use. A regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. So how many of you got habits in your life? 
All right. Some of y'all are just so random. There's no habits. It's great. But it looks like everybody's got some sort of, of habits in your life. Um, they can be good or bad. Amen? Yeah, right. They can be good or bad. So we know that, that there are habits that, that uh, they're hard to give up. Some of them are bad habits that's hard to give up. Some of them are good habits. Maybe you don't even want to try. That's fine. You just keep them. All right. Now, uh, Charles uh, Duhigg wrote a book called The Power of Habit. And, uh, and he wrote this quote. I think it's, it's a powerful one for us to, to wrestle with. Habits emerge because the brain is constantly looking for ways to save effort. That's my brain to a T. I don't know if y'all experienced that. Um, and it says, left to its own devices, the brain will try to make almost any routine into a habit because habits allow our minds to ramp down more often. When I leave my house, I get in my car, I put my seatbelt on, I turn the car on. These days, I don't have any AC, so I roll the windows down. Uh, and then I drive forward. I park on the street. I drive forward. I take a left. I take a right. I'm headed to church. I have done that probably thousands of times now. Most days, I do it multiple times a day. And, uh, and here's the problem. And maybe you've experienced this. Sometimes when I'm trying to go to hy V, I I accidentally drive to church. Anybody done that? Yeah, right. My brain is thinking about other things. It's on autopilot. And unless I'm intentional and going, hey, brain, uh, we're actually going to get groceries today, not Jesus, okay? You know, well, so, so that happens, right? Our brain tries to make everything we do a habit, make it habitual, because then it doesn't have to process anything to do that. It just sends you on autopilot. And then you can focus on other things with your brain power, right? It's just it's a powerful thing. Okay, so Duke uh, University in 2006 did a study, and uh, their findings say that 40% of our actions every day are not actually intentional decisions. They're just habitual. 40% of everything you do in a day is just habit, autopilot. That's mind-blowing to me. Uh, when you think about the minutes of the day that you are awake, and, uh, and in a week, you got 167 hours to work with. Probably should sleep some of those. All the rest are actions that you were doing every day, and 40% of that is autopilot. That's wild. Okay? So that makes you think about, then, if I'm going to have habits that shape 40% of what I do without thinking, they probably should be intentional. Okay? And uh, here's, a, here's a good one. Uh, net quote which was, does some insurance uh, surveys uh, for auto insurance. Uh, I'm not going to do a, a, a show of hands, although I really, really want to. They say that 60%, 66% of drivers pick their nose while they're driving. That's right. You can determine whether or not it's a good habit or a bad habit and whether or not it's intentional. Uh, it certainly has a result that you want if it's you. You're not supposed to touch your face during COVID, so I don't know if that goes down. During COVID, uh, but if you're on autopilot, 66% of you picking your nose, chances are you better wash your hands when you get to where you're going. All right, so you know maybe that's uh, maybe that's a bad example of of a habit you want to put in your life, but it just goes to illustrate that <laughs> bad habits. So, what? How does a habit get formed? Let's just cover that real quick. How does a habit get formed? Um, so. Here's what happens. There's a cue. There's something that happens, and you're like, all right, let's assess this. There's a cue. So, for example, you wake up in the morning. Okay, then there's a, a craving, something that you desire, like you want to feel alert. Then you respond by perhaps making a cup of coffee. Then you have a reward because you have now faked yourself into feeling alert. This is one of my habits. <laughs> so I have, you've now created a pathway for your brain to connect a coffee cup full of coffee with waking up in the morning. They're one and the same now. Because you do it long enough, and now you do it on autopilot. Here's another one. This will affect most everybody that's here. Your phone buzzes when it's face down on the table. You have a craving. You want to know. What is it? It starts to mess with your internal functionings, and your mind starts to go haywire. You want to close this loop, and so you respond. 
you pick it up and you look at the notification and it tells you that the Astros won again yesterday. No, wait a minute. That's probably not what it said. You now know the content. You've been rewarded, okay, because you now know the content. So what happens? You create a pathway in your brain to where when the phone buzzes, your body just responds. You pick up the phone and you look. Now, these can be good or bad habits, right? Sometimes we've got to work against them at different times. Um, probably not at the dinner table, you know, when your mom or dad are trying to have meaningful conversations with you or your spouse, for that matter. Um, so what do you have to do then when there's a, a cue and you have a craving? You have to intentionally, during a certain period of time, respond in the way that you want a good habit to develop. Right? Amen? None of this is totally like rocket science, but I would ask the question, how many times have we in our spiritual lives processed the same kind of information than we do in some of our other aspects of life, developing good life habits, right? Anybody ever tried to lose weight? Yeah, I've tried to lose weight. It's this, this past uh, six months or a little, little more than that, I've actually lost weight. I'm going to call it the COVID minus 15 pounds, okay, instead of the other way. Um, why? Well, because I had a cue. I had a motivation. Um, my health started to not feel so good. I, wasn't, I didn't have enough energy to do certain things. And um, I don't like paying for tests. <laughs> so there are all kinds of motivations for me. And so I tried to establish some different habits, exercise more, eat better, stop purchasing the things that are not good for me and have them around. And, um, and so, so far, so good. I've been maintaining. I have another goal. I haven't started yet. So I've been maintaining. It's felt nice for a while. But now if I want to go back into losing some more weight, I'm going to have to be intentional about certain habits that I allowed to creep back in, like those mini Dr. Peppers. Oh, 23 flavors of awesome. But I shouldn't buy those anymore, right, if I don't want to gain that weight back. So Jesus uh, challenges us, and the rest of the epistles challenge us to process how we treat our physical training, like a Michael Phelps or an everyday Joe that's trying to lose weight, and, and realize that, that it's actually more important and more impactful for us to be in a spiritual training. So 1 Timothy Chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 say this, Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. And in the life to come. The message has another powerful way to say this. It says, exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more so, making you fit both today and forever. So you see the transition here. It's a, it's a transition um, into eternity. It's a transition past the, the today impact of our life. It includes that, but it also then has this eternal impact that oftentimes is really hard for us to measure because it's immeasurable. <laughs> and it's a powerful thing that we can experience as we follow Jesus, as we watch what he is doing, and as we begin to implement some of the things that he has in his life. Jesus did, in fact, have habits. He had things that he did intentionally that, well, that was a part of a perfect relationship life with the Heavenly Father. And here, here are five things that, that we'll see emphasized in this being challenged. Five what we would call keystone habits. Habits that are so big that they actually have a ripple effect on the rest of your life as well. And the first one is committing to community. Can you say that with me? Committing to community. We'll focus on that next week. And um, as you read from Tuesday into the first five days of this, you'll get a, a quick introduction and overview of these five keystone habits that we see Jesus practicing in his life and that we think, well, if we're aiming at Jesus and we want a stronger relationship, 
with our God. Maybe, maybe we can implement these same habits. Number two, studying scripture. Y'all say that with me. Studying scripture. Now that one you think like, duh, right? Um, but even the things that we know are important and good in our life, if we're not intentional about establishing a habit, then other things will fill it, right? How many of you said, oh, I missed my devotion because I was, I was too busy today? Oh, right. These are the harder questions. I, I noticed that not as many people want to raise their hands for those. More people raise their hands about picking their nose than about admitting that we get too, too quote unquote, too busy to, to do our Bible studies. Right now, so studying scripture, we're going to see that even for Jesus, um, uh, he had a high value of scripture. High value of scripture. And actually pointed out in many ways how he fulfilled it. Uh, which is something that we'll see as we study scripture as well. Number three is prioritizing prayer. Say that with me. Prioritizing prayer. Yeah, so uh, the highest and most important thing in every healthy relationship is communication, right? Good communication, clear expectations, frequent communication. And, uh, and y'all, that's what prayer is for us. God invites us into a conversation all day, every day. For as, as many times as we are willing to talk to him, he's attentive. Yeah, that's a powerful thing, so we'll prioritize that. Number four, seeking solitude. Say it with me. Seeking solitude. Some of y'all are like, I've got enough of that right now. Well, we're not just talking about being alone, uh, but it's solitude with a purpose, all right? And so we'll, we'll look at that more closely, but even Jesus got away sometimes just to be with his heavenly father. And so doing that intentionally uh, as a habit, as a pattern in your life, uh, a rhythm of grace, you might say, is, is really powerful. And Jesus models that for us. And number five is choosing church. Everybody say, choosing church. Yeah, now some of y'all might just be like, it's not just showing up in the building at church or in the field for that matter. Um, but there's something bigger than that that will unpack that, that you are actually a part of a body of Christ that we call the church. And, uh, and you have so much that God has for you to do and giftedness uh, for you to offer over to your community. And uh, we'll see what that, that looks like. So uh, Jesus did these things in a perfect relationship with the Heavenly Father. Uh, I'm not perfect. And um, I'm going to step out on a limb here. You're probably not perfect. I know, I'm sorry to bust the, the bubble. But you're probably not perfect either. And, and so we know uh, we are not God. Uh, but we do know also that, that Jesus, who has begun a powerful work in us, um, is actually working to bring that to completion. So I would say it this way. Uh, Jesus loves us so much. He loves us exactly the way we are, right? That's grace. That's the love of God. Um, that's why he came and, and gave up his life to sacrifice for us. Jesus also, though, loves us too much to leave us exactly the way we are. Amen? Yeah. Um, which is a powerful thing. Uh, so that's why he invites us into this, you know, work with me, walk with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. All right, so this is what we're going to endeavor into. And, and here's just a couple of practical things that I want to throw out there to, to get us going. And we'll wrap up our message this way. Some of you are like, oh, good, there's the cue. Whew. Now, we're, when you're wanting to change things in your life and, um, and, and instill new habits that are good habits, uh, there's some, some real practical things that we have to be mindful of. And, I, and that's why I love that we're starting this week with this introduction, assessing the whole journey, getting a little taste because we can do some inventory this week. And the way I'm going to say it is we can do some inventory of our people, places, and things. I didn't make that up. I borrowed that from, you know, some communities of support that I grew up around, right? But people, places, and things. First off, you're the first people. Like, you actually have to want to be like Jesus. That's called motivation. Like, you actually you have to have your own desire to actually follow Jesus and to follow him well as a Christian. If you do not actually want that, guess how this next 40 days is going to go? 
We're going to have to wipe off the microphone mark after that. I'm sorry. So it probably made it through on that one. It's not going to go well uh, because, like, Jesus, even though he wants to help us and help us to adapt and change and grow by the power of the Holy Spirit, like, if we're fighting against that, guess what? He's going to say, all right, let me know when you're ready. Scripture shows that over and over again. Um, and so it's, it's for us to pray to God right now and say, God, help me to actually have a, have a softened heart and, and a softened mind and attentive ears, open ears to hear you and to be shaped by you. So we can start with, with us and, and really say, man, God, I want this, so help me get after this. The other thing you got to do is check the people around your life, uh, your support system. If your support system is constantly drawing you away from uh, a spiritual journey, uh, is it going to be easy to stick with it? I'm getting some head. No. No, it's not. Uh, I can assure you uh, that when I got people in my life that are rocking some Dr. Peppers and I'm trying not to drink Dr. Pepper, ah, it is so much harder. So what happens? You feel yourself, uh, you feel your life with people um, who are actually chasing after the same thing so that you can encourage one another, support one another, celebrate the wins together along the way and see what God does. Yeah, we've got this thing called huddles that we've been talking about. It's not just so that we can fill up a bunch of groups of, with people. It's so that you don't have to do this alone. And that when you're having a tough day, you've got other people you can count on and say, hey, y'all, I need prayer. It's a tough day. Uh, pray me through it. Why are you trying to knock me off, Jesus? I'm just kidding. You got it? These hockey pucks are awesome, by the way. I don't know who brought those. There's a lot of Michigan and Red Wing, though, so I think I got a hint. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, good guess. Mrs. Worsing, yeah. Michigan fans. So I lost track on that one right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but our huddles, you can sign up for a huddle so that you don't have to do this alone, and you can put people in your life that are also trying to follow Jesus so that when you're in it together that you're encouraged by one another. Uh, places. If you're frequently going to places that are not about following Jesus, is going to be a challenge. If you're frequently filling up your schedule to the point where there's no space for you to do your daily devotion reading and try the challenge that's in there, then it's not going to go well. So this is just practical where you're shaping your spaces, your places, so that there's room for this for the next 40 days to see what God does with that. Now, during COVID-19, y'all, a bunch of our places have been removed from our calendars for us. <laughs> How cool is that, that during a time that we're experiencing less busyness, we can enter into an intentional time to be with God, to be with Jesus and strengthen our relationship and our habits around him. So we've already got a context that's helping to shape that opportunity. And before we add on a bunch of stuff again, perhaps maybe we ought to start with Jesus and say, Jesus, what do you want me to do about the places that I frequent now? The things that I fill my schedule with. And then uh, part, of, part of this deal is, is um, just putting around you in your environment certain reminders and encouragements that reprogram the patterns of what's going into your life. So, you know, during like study scripture, we're going to have you putting up sticky notes of scripture on your, your uh, mirror in the bathroom so that there's an environmental change that will remind you about scripture every day. There's going to be uh, environmental changes that we would have to do to prioritize prayer and to know the place and to maybe put the phone in the other room so that we shortcut that cue. And, uh, well, Saul likes that one. And uh, ironically, Saul is hosting us online with electronic devices. So there is a place for those, just for the record. Uh, but there's also a place where we put that thing away and, and shape our environment without that distraction so that we could just experience a conversation with God. All of these things are super practical. 
And those are things and those are, those are, those are part of us preparing this week. So why? So that Philippians 1.6, Paul's writing this to the people of Philippi, and I'm saying this to the people of Blono. I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I am certain that God is at work in you and that he's going to continue to show up every single day in you and with you so that he can keep shaping you, keep showing you how to do this thing we call life in a way that, that is most fulfilling for a follower of Jesus. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead that is living in you, by that Spirit, I pray that Jesus Christ would daily do this work as we enter to, into this 40-day challenge, this being challenge. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much uh, that, that you love us enough to come to us where we are, that you're patient enough to show us by a life lived, walking on this earth, well, how we ought to establish intentional habits and patterns in our life to follow you. Lord, our, our deepest desire is to be in a stronger relationship with our Savior. And so I pray, God, that as we enter into this 40-day challenge, that, Lord, you would help us to see that growth Help us, Lord, to, to see how powerful it is to experience a, a stronger relationship with Jesus. And then, Lord, as we experience that, I pray, God, that we don't hoard it, uh, but, God, as you send us out into our daily lives, that we would be modeling then for others what it looks like to, to experience Jesus. May they see Jesus in us, that they might be introduced to their Savior. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, amen. I did not look at what comes next because I'm living in the blissful land of ignorance. And so I'm going to step aside. And uh, Pastor Bond is going to come up here and uh, lead us into what comes next with these beautiful paperweights. Uh, and um, all I, all I want to say is... Uh, and reiterate is how grateful I am for you. Um, there is no greater joy for this pastor than to see all of you walk out here and hunker down in your spots and bring the things that you need. And so we're going to do this every week for as long as we can, y'all. Um, yeah. When we do one day transition back inside, y'all know that we'll have this sliver right here. And then at another space and time, we'll have this sliver right here. And then at another space and time, we'll have this sliver right here. And you see how that goes. And, and um, I pray that, that for as long as we can, we can have the fullest expression of our body of Christ right here um, together. So uh, God's blessings on the rest of your worship today. We will continue our worship by singing that song, Build My Life.
at this time, I invite you to stand if you are able for the prayers of the church as well as the Lord's Prayer. As I was sitting up here, I don't know if you're like me, but I tend to get cold fairly easily. So when the sun goes behind the cloud, I feel a little chilly. And the sun comes out and it feels good. So maybe there's a lesson there that we bask in the light of the sun. And we will do that in our prayers. Most gracious Lord, there are times where each of us does grow weary and tired. And we are thankful that we can come to you. We can be with you and bask in the light, the warmth that you give to us as you restore and renew our souls. And so we ask, Lord, that as we begin the being challenge, bless the efforts of your people in our desire to be with you on a more regular and frequent basis. And as we learn about these keystone habits, may they become a foundation for a journey along the spiritual pathway of growth, and may they permeate every aspect of our lives. Bless the time we spend individually being with you. Bless the time we spend in our families being with you. And bless the time we spend in our huddles being with you. And the time we spend being with you in worship. We pray, Lord, all those things that you would bless. We ask, Lord, too, for your blessing in a different way, to bring your care and your healing to those that need that the most, whether that be physical, spiritual, or emotional. And Lord, for some physical needs, we lift up to you Heather Klaus, Melissa Burning, Angela Shepherd, Rick Dormus. Lord, there is also many others that we know in our hearts, and we lift them up individually to you at this time. We ask, too, Lord, that you would be with and guard the military personnel and first responders who watch over, look after your people. We ask, too, that you would protect those who serve in the medical fields, doctors, nurses, technicians. Guard them and keep them safe. Lord, we live life, and we are thankful for so many blessings. But we know, too, Lord, that in this life, there are times that we grieve and we are sad. And we know that you and you alone have the words of eternal life and there is nowhere else we can go to have those words. And so we pray, Lord, that those words of eternal life would bring care and comfort to some of our Trinity family and friends. Lord, be with the family and friends of Joy Kidwell upon her death this past week. We pray, too, that you would be with the family and friends of Juanita Nesby upon her death and be with the family and friends of Doris Prenzler upon her death all within this past week. Lord, you do have the words of eternal life. And we, so we rest in that comfort of knowing that they have already joined you in that eternal life, and we look forward to that day where we will all see you face to face. We also, Lord, thank you for that prayer that you have taught us to pray, and we join in that at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One of the things I'd like to mention at this time is we are always so thankful for the, the tithe, the offerings that you are able to uh, continue to give. Uh, you certainly today, if it, you prefer, you may leave those at the table over here. There's offering envelopes also provided there. 
You may also uh, continue to send those into the church office by the mail. You may text offerings. You may also do that online. So again, thank you for uh, that continued support of the ministries that are continuing, even with uh, things slowing down a bit. Also, a reminder uh, that following the worship today, there is um, Kids Bean Challenge Roundup. And that will premiere today, uh, right after the service, uh, about 10 a.m. I'm not quite sure what time it is now, but if you're not able to uh, do that here on your way home, it will be online so you can check that out a little bit later today. As we leave this place, this time of being together, we look forward to the time that we can each individually and in groups be with Jesus and each other as well. And who knows where God may lead you today, tomorrow, next week. But as you go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing song, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Go in peace and serve the Lord.